number of engineers uh, in the population in general increased 15-fold. Now, let's take a look at Virginia. What came out of the debates in Virginia was that the money was divided. One-third of the land-grant fund went to the Hampton Normal and Industrial Institute for black Virginians. And two-thirds of the money uh, was allocated to the Preston and Olin Institute in Blacksburg for white Virginians. The Preston and Olin Institute had long been a mechanics institute, a, a place where, where people learned basic roles, role, rules of thumb in uh, everyday mechanics. This was funded and founded uh, by the Methodists, although uh, uh, over time the Methodists focused primarily in the North had reduced funding and the Preston Olin Institute had been, had been floundering. It had, had money troubles for some time. Inside the state there was tremendous competition for the funds. First up out front was VMI, the Virginia Military Institute, which had been founded in the 1830s. It tried to get the money, but it failed. It even offered to uh, move to, to Richmond. Uh, but because VMI was strongly, uh, was strongly allied and played a significant role in the, in, uh, the war between the states, uh, there was the, the, the legislature, which is uh, now post-war uh, sensibilities, didn't want to fund this very southern institution. Then it seemed the money might be going to William and Mary, a private institution that uh, had, uh, was founded uh, in the 1600s, but had been struggling for some time. Uh, but that didn't work out. Then the University of Virginia tried for the money. The University of Virginia founded in the 1820s. Uh, but it also uh, didn't win out because of a move that was made by the state legislature. What fi finally won the day was the argument that the money needed to go to a school where the agricultural and man, uh, mechanical function would be paramount and not secondary, as such would be the case, as would have been the case if the money had gone to, say, UVA or to William and Mary. So they, they, they passed a, uh, uh, a statute basically giving the money to any school or to a school, stipulating that the school had to rename itself the Virginia Agricultural and Mechanical College. Well, the Preston and Olin Institute, which was in fairly bad shape financially, was more than willing to do this. And after a number of votes, uh, the money, at least two-thirds of the money, went there. The school gave up its state uh, charter, donated the buildings to the state, and reorganized itself as the Virginia Agricultural Mechanical College, opening in October of 1872 with 43 students, three professors, and a, and a, prof and a president. Now, the Hampton Institute, uh, which developed and still exists, uh, had asked for five twelfths of the money because five twelfths of Virginians were black. But they were only able to convince the legislature to get one third of the total, a legislature con controlled by white Virginians. Now, at this Virginia Agricultural and, Mil and, and uh, Mechanical College, uh, let us explore its early development. Its initial mission was to, uh, as self-defined, was to make, was involved making sure that it went beyond providing purely practical education uh, for mechanics and farmers. Rather, it defined its, its role as serving the industrial classes more generally, which were defined in the first catalog, and the catalogs are a very interesting source of information here, Defined in the catalog as those who, quote, handled tools or worked in the fields, mines, or workshops. The uh, 1873 uh, curriculum, for example, uh, uh, made it clear that this school was no longer going to be just a mechanics institute. And I quote, the difficulty of combining education with manual labor of educating the head and the hands at the same time is fully appreciated. But the effort will be earnestly made to preserve a, dual, a due equilibrium between the claims of brain and muscle, so far as they may, may be found in conflict. In all cases, the improvement and cultivation of the mental faculties will be regarded as the prime consideration and will never be subordinated to the acquisition of mere expertness in handling tools. So you can see the emphasis here. 
But at the same time, uh, uh, um, the main uh, uh, curricular activity involved technical training for these m members of these lower classes. They set up a structure with uh, some common experiences and then a separation. As the, as the catalog put it, quote, a curriculum has been adopted to which every student will be required to confine himself, except that in the senior year there will be two parallel courses, one for farmers and the other for mechanics. So the school initially established basically graduate certificates, three-year programs. One would leave after three years as a graduate in agriculture or a graduate in mechanics. And uh, in the last year, the, the farmers and the mechanics then took courses that differed somewhat, although there was also significant overlap. The farmers took courses in surveying, in astronomy, agriculture, history, English literature, moral philosophy, and physics. So you can see how they're being pushed to develop the head as well as the hands. Mechanics were uh, taking courses uh, in, uh, also in astronomy and history and English literature and uh, moral philosophy. But they, in addition to that, they took courses in conic sections, technical mechanics, technology. And the technical mechanics course itself was to subdivided into mechanical drawing, mechanical engineering, machinery, machines, theories of machines, and steam engines. In both cases, shop work was emphasized. Very important that we have a heavy emphasis on shop work. As the catalog put it, quote, the illustration and actual practice furnished in the shops will serve to impress upon the student the teachings of the other courses and will at the same time give him the art of executing nicely the operations he practices. So classwork in order to develop the head and uh, to share the, uh, what was understood as theory, and then heavy experience in the shop. Early on, the school had three departments. The literary department for classical studies, the moral philosophy and the like, the history. The scientific department, which is where the physics and the astronomy were taught. And these had traditional courses. The new department formed was called the technical department. This was the innovation, the, the moral innova land grant innovation. It included both agriculture and the mechanic arts. By 1881, there were four departments: the technical and the agricultural, um, the agriculture mechanical dimensions were split up into separate departments, while the literary and scientific departments were combined together, and a new department in business was added. By the time we get into mid-1980s, 1884, uh, a tension is, is developing inside the institute. In order to get beyond, it, it, it still had a reputation of a school providing practical education as something like an advanced mechanics institute. To help push beyond that, um, and basically required developing d a degree structure, offering four-year degrees. And so it's in 1884 that the first engineering degrees are offered or at, at Virginia Agricultural and Mechanical College. The first being mining engineering. Blacksburg, Virginia is near the coal fields of so, uh, southwestern Virginia and West Virginia, followed shortly thereafter by civil engineering. Note, mechanical hasn't appeared yet. And a degree in Bachelor of Arts. This was, a, this was a creative move by the board of, uh, th then called Board of Visitors, which had decided to interpret the Morrill Land Grant Act broadly, not just doing agriculture and mechanical arts, but advancing more generally the industrial classes. But still, uh, it was clear that, that, that they were experiencing uh, issues involving the uh, uh, relation between practical education and, and uh, let's say, classical education. Discipline, for example, early on was a problem, as they were often training students who were unprepared for college life. So that they, in order to alert students about the demands, the, uh, there was a, uh, a warning, in a way, put in the catalog, which uh, prospective students would read along with their parents. And I quote, no young man need enter this college unless he is determined to study earnestly and conduct himself orderly. It is no place for idlers or those viciously disposed. The seed time of life is too precious to be trifled away. 
So soon as it is demonstrated that a student is not profiting by the facilities here offered, his parents will be required to withdraw him. College is not a place for boys. Young men only should be sent from home to enter college. Boys, whose habits are yet unfixed, are easily misled and are prone to run to excesses and should be kept where teachers have them under charge all the time and can, can direct their habits of study and conduct. That was in the college catalog. Mid-1980s, the, the trend in, 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 in increasing the prestige of the institution, advancing the industrial classes, and, and, now, and now serving a, a new function, which I'll get to in a moment, involved adding scientific content. This is a general trend. The, the, the catalog announces for the first time in 1886 that, uh, that an, an interest here in the sciences. The leading object of the college in conformity with an act of Congress and the acts of the state legislature is to teach the principles and the applications of science. It's then finally that we get the introduction of mechanical engineering. Note as we go through this, uh, at the times uh, at which in, during which decades different fields of engineering appear. Shop work became, was renamed during the 1880s as laboratory work uh, to indicate that it was more about the application of science than it was to develop practical skills. The late 1980s, 1880s and early 1890s, this tension comes to a head. A president is let go. A new president arrives and with a, uh, who elaborates a further development in the mission. So the new mission uh, the new take on the mission is not only involves not only serving the industrial classes, but by means of serving the industrial classes to serve the state. Uh, yet at the same time, inside of the school, there 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 uh, there are conditions and activities supporting, in a way, three different missions simultaneously. In a way, it still was a mechanics institute teaching rule of thumb, farming, or shop work. It was also a school providing uh, a relatively lowbrow college education for the children of farmers and industrial workers. But, what, but the new emphasis, the new interest, is in providing a college that's teaching the application of the science of sciences to agricultural, mechanical, and related interests inside the state. Uh, the degree-bound students began to express resentment over the continuing presence of the practical students who, in their judgment, quote, lowered the dignity and prestige of a true college. This comes from testimony by uh, students at the time. So the new president formulates an expanded mission. This is a longer quote from the new president. I am convinced that the true development to be given to such schools, namely land-grant schools, should lie in the direction of technology. Here the word technology appears. They should be made, as far as our social and economic conditions will allow, more and more professional and technical. This field is virgin. The demand for such training is great and increasing. The line of work is definite and clear-cut. The stressing of the technological features adds comparatively little to the cost of running our agricultural and mechanical colleges. The men and materials demanded, in accordance with the terms of the Acts of Endowment, are sufficient to send out well-equipped for their life work, not only agriculturalists culturists and mechanics, but analytical chemists and civil, mechanical, and mining engineers as well. A small additional outlay would enable them to train architects, biologists, mineralogists, geologists, electrical engineers, horticulturists, viticulturalists, etc. It must be remembered, however, that these men are to be trained not only as specialists, but as citizens. It is not only possible, but proper for these schools to educate men for manufacturing and commercial processes. So can you see this, this, the move now is to, is to serve an expanding industry and to make sure that the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, is participating in this industrial expansion. The term mechanics, for example, gets dropped entirely in favor of the more appealing term engineering. New degrees are introduced in electrical engineering, but also in agriculture, horticulture, applied chemistry, 
uh, general science. The existing degrees in civil and mining are, are, are still there. Uh, but it may, continues to offer the shorter courses in practical agriculture and practical me mechanics. As a symbolic move to, to uh, uh, publicize the new status as an institute with many different uh, areas of, of applied science and technology, the, the, the label Polytechnic Institute is added to the school. Early on, it's the Virginia Agricultural and Mechanical College and Polytechnic Institute. But over time, the Agricultural and Mechanical College part gets dropped, and the school becomes known as the Virginia Polytechnic Institute, or VPI. As we turn the century, turn be, uh, join in, into the 20th, early 20th century, the 1900s, a new tension arises. This is now between the polytechnic side and the original mission in agriculture. This nationally is a, is a period during which the federal government is getting active in the support of agriculture, recognizing that it's crucial to the, to the uh, economic viability of the country. And so the Department of Agriculture, for example, is formed right during these years. Inside the state, there's a move now by those who are critical of the polytechnic mission who want to push agriculture. For example, the Richmond newspaper calling attention to the fact that many uh, graduates of VPI are going off to work in industries outside the state. They write, quote, VPI is better known in New York than in rural Virginia. And a, another farm group uh, that was acted for a long time to try to expand practical agricultural education, it put in its uh, publications uh, the argument that VPI was, quote, the best agency in the state for taking boys off the farm, educating them, and then sending them out of the state. During this period of time, only 10% of the students were in agriculture. So the, the, then the president announces an intention to increase the quality of uh, training in agriculture to be on a par with engineering. Uh, and, uh, and so the, the university, the institute rather, joins a, 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 a national system then developing that involved the introduction of agricultural experiment stations, the phenomenon of e extension, as th which became a key part uh, of the land-grant mission, linked up to, that, to the interpretation that involved serving the state. In engineering, there are four fields that still dominate. And from the uh, uh, catalog in early 1900s, their relationship is laid out rather nicely, so I'll quote. Quote, being the oldest and broadest in scope of all the engineering professions, civil engineering pays particular attention to the pure sciences which underlie the art. Uh, this, is a, this is promotional material for students. So note that civil engineering is seen as the, the queen, basically, of the uh, of fields of engineering, where mechanical engineering is much more practical. Quoting again, the course in mechanical engineering is designed to give the graduate as broad a training as possible and yet at the same time fit him for some specific types of work now in demand. The course is planned so as to make the student as useful as possible to his country and to himself. So you see the, uh, the commitment here in a way to growing industry. Next up, electrical engineering. The quote, quoting again, the, the course in electrical engineering is intended to give a broad training in general and scientific subjects, as well as in those studies that are especially adapted to the needs of the electrical engineering. Owing to the intimate relations that exist among the various branches of engineering work, the electrical engineer should be able to deal intelligently with related problems in other lines than his own. To this end, special studies in other engineering departments are included in this course. Engin and electrical engineering focusing on the sciences. Because it was new, they didn't have enough courses for electrical engineering, and so those students also took courses from the other fields. Finally, the fourth, the mining engineer, who is prepared to, to operate over a wide field, I'm quoting, should be well-grounded in civil engineering and have a knowledge of certain phases of mechanical and electrical engineering, and of metallurgy, and a good knowledge of geology, remember that, and analytical chemistry. So in the early 1900s, there are four fields, basically, of engineering. And in the second decade, around in, in, in the teens, finally, chemical engineering comes to the university al along with agricultural engineering. In the 20s, 
uh, the, the, the various fields come together to establish a uniform first year. Here is the beginning of what later became known as engineering fundamentals. And here how is it, how it was justified. Quote, in order to permit all engineering students to have a year in which to find out definitely what specialty, specialty they desire to pursue, the first year of all curricula in the School of Engineering is made uniform. The courses in orientation and in the introduction to engineering are both given in order to help students decide as to the particular line of engineering work they will follow. It's in the 20s that industrial engineering uh, is introduced. Moving uh, 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 another uh, degree then developed called commercial engineering and industrial education into the newly established School of Business Administration. It's in the 20s when business administration takes off. 